In this lesson, we will summarize the uh, differential equations and responses of a uh, first order system and also look at uh, commonly made statements such as a DC current cannot pass through a capacitor or you cannot have a DC voltage across an inductor and so on. Okay. So, first of all, we will take this as an example, but the statements I make will be by and large true for every first order circuit. Okay. Any circuit with a single capacitor and any number of independent sources and other linear components can be reduced to this form. Okay, this V S, R, and C. Okay, this may be the actual circuit, or this V S and R could be the Thevenin equivalent of whatever is connected to the capacitor. As long as you have a single capacitor, you will have a first order system at most, and this will be the equivalent circuit. Okay. Now, let us identify different possible variables. I have marked V c the capacitor voltage, I see the capacitor current and V r the voltage across the resistor. Now, we have already seen that we can write the differential equation for the circuit in terms of any of these variables. If we write it in terms of uh, V c, this is the differential equation in terms of uh, I c, this is the differential equation and finally, in terms of V r, this is the differential equation and these are generally uh, true. Okay, We have not made any assumptions, these are just the differential equations we get. Uh, if we choose V c as the variable or I c as the variable or V r as the variable. Now, the thing you can notice uh, which I have pointed out earlier is that the left hand side is exactly the same. So, in the source free circuit when V s is 0, all three essentially give you the same uh, differential equation Okay, with the right hand sides being 0. Okay, If uh, we set V s equal to 0 that is the source free case, then the right hand side will be 0, 0 and 0. So, you can see that the differential equations are exactly the same if the right hand sides are 0, only the variables are different. Now, because the differential equations are the same, each of these variables follows the same response. Okay? So, the natural response of each of these which corresponds to the source free case would be V c would be V c of 0 exponential minus T by R c and for I c also it will be I c of 0 exponential minus T by R c and finally, we have V r of time would be V r at time 0 exponential minus T by R c. Okay. So, so, once you are familiar with the basics of a first order RC circuit, you do not even have, have to write the differential equation. You will be able to write down the natural response simply by identifying the initial condition, okay, which you can do by regular circuit analysis. Now, to understand this properly, you need to understand first order differential equations and all the things we have discussed, but after you have enough experience with it, any first order system you should be able to solve simply by identifying the appropriate initial condition and this is true for any variable in the circuit because all variables will follow the same pattern as you can see over there. Okay. Now, uh, if uh, V s is assumed to be a constant that is the case we have looked at so far, Okay. then also things are quite easy. If uh, V s is a constant, then again these two will be 0, because the time derivative of V s is 0 okay? and we know the solution to that as well. It, in fact, it is exactly the same solution. Okay? I c will eventually go to 0. By the way, if you remove this derivative term, you will be left with uh, something else, just an algebraic equation and that is the steady state solution. right? Uh, for constant inputs, the steady states of uh, any of these variables is also a constant and the only way these things will be constant is if the derivatives are 0. So, the steady state equation is basically when the derivatives are 0, steady states for constant inputs and the responses are the same only for 
uh, we see is it different. Now, we again in a general first order circuit which could be more complicated than this. First order of course, means a single capacitor, but you could have any number of resistors, control sources, any number of independent sources and so on. So, you pick any variable, it will follow in general some equation like this. And what is the solution to this? The way we have written it, when V s is constant, V c of t is V s plus V c of 0 minus V s times exponential minus t by r c. I will elaborate on this a little bit. Let me write down the differential equation as well. The solution to this is Okay, this is written in the form of the force response plus the natural response. Now, uh, it looks like this V s is specific to this one, but uh, if you think about it for a moment, you will realize that whatever appears here is nothing but the steady state solution. Okay. So, if you have a constant input V s, then the steady state is given by dvc being 0 which means that we take only this part of the equation vc equals vs this is what happens after steady state is reached and like i have emphasized every circuit that we'll consider now will be a stable uh, circuit and this sort of steady state will be reached the natural response will eventually die out so this whole equation can be written in a more general way as V c of infinity plus V c of 0 minus V c of infinity times exponential minus T by R c. So, V c of infinity is the steady state value of V c. We know that it will asymptotically reach this value and V c of 0 is the initial condition on V c and the solution is valid when V s is a constant. That is very important. If you have V s to be some arbitrary function of time, you cannot simply substitute that function of time over here. Okay. So, this is valid only if uh, V s is a constant. So, now uh, this is a general form of uh, solution to any first order circuit. We have been looking at R c circuits that two with a single R and C, but as long as you have a circuit with either a single capacitor or a single inductor and the rest of it the circuit could be as complicated as you can make it. Okay, You could have any number of independent sources and uh, linear elements such as resistors and control sources. We know from Thevenin's theorem that all of that can be reduced to a single voltage source in series with a single resistor at the terminals of the capacitor and if you have an inductor again the same thing can be done. So, the result is a first order circuit. The solution to any variable in such circuits will be of this form. Okay. The constant input part is important. Let us say it is some voltage V x as a function of time, it will be the steady state value plus the difference between initial and the steady state values which decays with time. Okay. So, like I already pointed out, this is the steady state value and this is this is the difference between initial and steady state and this is the time constant. Okay. And this is true for any current also. In general, it will be of this form. Okay.
and of course, it will have the same time constant. Okay. So, this is the time constant, this is the steady state value and this part is the difference between initial and steady state values. What is the point of writing down all this? Like I mentioned earlier, if you have a first order circuit with enough experience, you should be able to write down the response even without ever writing the differential equation. Now, this is not to say that you should forget everything you know about the differential equation. So, initially you write down the differential equation and make sure that everything is consistent, but uh, after a while you will be able to simply identify the uh, steady state values of either currents or voltages. I will explain how to do that in a moment and the initial values of uh, currents or voltages and once you identify those things, the only thing remaining to be identified is the time constant and that also can be identified because you have either a single capacitor or a single inductor and the effective resistance that appears across the capacitor or the inductor in the source free uh, circuit that is the uh, equivalent resistance and the product of the resistance and capacitance is the time constant. Okay. Now, uh, for all the cases that we know, this will be modified a little bit later. How do we do these things? So, initial condition it means that before applying the input or before the step changes to some other value, the capacitor has some voltage and usually you find it by assuming that the capacitor voltage does not change instantaneously. Okay. This is true if the current in the capacitor is finite. Okay. Based on this, you will be able to calculate the initial condition on any variable in a circuit. Okay. So, again let me take a simple circuit like this and let me say that the input V s changes from 0 volts to 5 volts and the voltage on the capacitor uh, just before the step, let us say the step occurs at t equal to 0, this uh, superscript of minus means that it is just before the step and that is equal to 2 volts. Okay. Now, first of all, the value of the capacitor voltage, if you wanted to find the initial condition on the capacitor voltage that is just after the step which is indicated by 0 plus, this will be the same as V c of 0 minus because we cannot have infinite currents in the circuit. If there is an infinite current through the uh, capacitor, then that infinite current also flows through the resistor which means that there has to be an infinite voltage across the resistor. We will assume that our V s is finite. So, we cannot have infinite currents in a case like this. Later, we will see circuits where that can happen, but in this circuit it cannot. So, this will be equal to V c of 0 minus which is the same as 2 volts. Instead, if you were interested in V r, okay, what is uh, V r, the initial condition on V r just as the step is applied, V r is nothing but V s minus V c. So, if V s is 5 volts just after the step is applied and V c is 2 volts because it is continuous, V r would be 3 volts. Okay. And finally, if uh, I c were of interest, then you can see that this I c is nothing but the voltage across the resistor divided by r. Okay. And the initial condition on the voltage we have already found out. So, the initial condition of the current is 3 volts by r and if r is 1 kilo ohm, it is 1 milli ampere. Okay. So, you will be able to find out the initial condition directly from the circuit quite easily. Okay. Then, 
the final condition or the steady state condition. with constant inputs. This is important, we are now dealing only with constant inputs. The differential equations we wrote were general and independent of what kind of input you have, but the solutions we have obtained is only for constant inputs. Now, what makes this easy to evaluate is the following. If you have constant inputs, the voltages across the capacitors will also be constant in steady state. Okay. So, this fact that we have constant inputs means that capacitor voltage is a constant in steady state. Okay. So, that gives us a great uh, simplification. If the capacitor voltage is constant, the capacitor current, so here we have a constant voltage. So, the capacitor current I C, which is C times the time derivative of the capacitor voltage will be 0. Okay. So, if you have constant inputs and you have reached steady state, the capacitor currents will be 0 and which means that they can be treated as open circuits. Okay. This is fine. So, again uh, we will take the same example as before. If you are interested in calculating the final value, with a 5 volt input and a 1 kilo ohm resistor and some capacitor C. As far as the final value calculation is concerned, we saw that the capacitor current will be 0 and for the final value calculation only, we can open circuit the capacitors. Okay. And now, it is very easy to see what is the final uh, steady state voltage. It is equal to 5 volts because no current flows through this resistor either. Okay. So, if they call this V c, V c of infinity is 5 volts. Okay. This is a very simple circuit, but in any circuit you can open circuit the capacitor, then you will be left with only independent sources and resistors or control sources. This is like the earlier circuit analysis without capacitors, which you can do quite easily. Okay. V c steady state value is 5 volts. On the other hand, if uh, you wanted I C, then you can clearly see that that I C is 0 here because of the open circuit. So, I C of infinity is 0 and similarly, if you are interested in V R as the that was the variable of interest, then you can see that V R is also 0 because there is no current through the resistor. Okay. So, this also can be identified quite easily. Okay. So, we discussed how you can uh, uh, find the initial and the final values by inspecting the circuit or by doing simpler circuit calculations. That is, you do not have to worry about the differential equation. Okay. You may have to solve for some uh, algebraic circuit, that is a circuit with independent sources and resistors and control sources and so on. And finally, calculating the time constant is also very easy. So, let us say we have any circuit with independent sources then resistors and control sources and we have two terminals available to us and across these we connect a capacitor. This is the only capacitor in the circuit. Okay. In that case, this circuit will be at most of first order and the rest of this can be represented by a voltage source V T H in series with R T H and we have our capacitor C. Then, the time constant of this is found by setting the independent sources to 0, which short circuits this voltage source and we have the C 
and you have to find the resistance across C and that is equal to R T H. So, the time constant is 1 over R T H times C. Okay. So, in other words, if you have a first order circuit, every variable will follow this type of uh, behavior. Then, you first find I x of 0, this is by assuming that capacitor voltages do not change and this is true if the capacitor currents are not infinite. We will uh, later see examples where it can be infinite and you find the steady state values that is values at infinity by open circuiting the capacitor. If you have an inductive circuit, you find the steady state by short circuiting the inductor because the inductor voltages are 0 in steady state with constant inputs. Then you have these values at 0 and infinity and the time constant can of course, be found by finding the thevenin resistance across the terminals of the capacitor in the source free circuit. Okay. So, the entire uh, response can be written down by inspection.